Now come to the next part. See here, whenever I'm talking about neurons in the neural network, how it look like? So if it is a neural network, a particular neuron will look like this. Means we have some input in the neural network and this neuron will have some activation function and summation function. So here we will calculate weight into input plus bias and then we will pass through this information to the activation function and this is how this neural network will process information. But see in RNN or LSTM, instead of drawing neuron, I am just creating a box. So understand one thing, whenever I am drawing box means it signifies memory, not neurons. So neuron means it has a very feeble or very less amount of information retention capability. But whenever I'm talking about box means it signifies memory, means it has a good amount of information retention capability. Now here the question is why we have to use memory instead of this neuron. See, in RNN and LSTM, this models mainly focuses on information preservation means it has to predict something depending on the previous sequence it will predict something in the future. So it has to preserve the sequence. So for preserving this large amount of sequence we have to use memory. We cannot use neuron for that purpose. So the basic difference between artificial neural network RNN and LSTM is that ANN uses neurons. Neurons has a very less amount of information retention capability. RNN and LSTM both uses memory cells and this memory cells can preserve large amount of previous sequence of information that can be useful to predict the future word or future sound or future activity. Now we will focus on more details. That is, we have to focus on how this RNN and LSTM cells internally will look like. See, this is the internal configuration. So this is a beautiful concept. Please pay attention. In RNN memory cell, we have two gates. One is input gate and another one is output gate. Whereas in the LSTM memory, we have three gates, input gate, output gate and forget gate. So here my point is, whenever I am drawing one RNN memory cell, it will have two gates. And whenever we have LSTM memory cell, it will have three gates. So this is the basic difference. But if you ask me that, okay ma'am, we have understood, but what is the importance of this gate? or why these gates are useful, then I'm just giving you a beautiful real life example so that you could understand. So try to understand one point. See, whenever I am teaching to any particular student, so what will happen, whatever information I am providing to that student, not all information will be retained in the memory of the student. The student will fetch some important information from this tutorial, and will forget some unrelated or simple information. So human brain has the ability to extract meaningful information from the surrounding environment and it can let go some unnecessary information. So my first point is whenever a memory cell is containing this three kind of gate, then this memory cell will have the same kind of behavior just like human brain. Means it can retain some amount of important information and it can let go some unrelated information. So now I'm explaining it. So if somebody asks you this question, what is the importance of input gate in the LSTM unit? So this input gate is useful in order to take the current input data. Current input data means say I'm using this LSTM unit for prediction purpose. So definitely it will take some sequence as an input. So input gate means the input gate in LSTM network determines how much of the new input data should be added to the memory cell. So the main activity is 
how much of the new information must be added to the memory cell. So this is the main purpose of the input gate in the LSTM unit. So I'm giving you one example. Consider a weather prediction task. So in a weather prediction task where the LSTM is trained to predict the temperature, say based on the historical weather data. So I have historical weather data. So I have to predict using LSTM model. What I have to predict? I have to predict the temperature. So what it will do? The input gate in the LSTM would determine how much of the current weather data means temperature, humidity, wind speed should be added to the memory cell to update the model's understanding of the weather parameter. So whenever I am using input gate, this input gate will determine how much different different parameters should I consider that can make the LSTM model understand better for better prediction. So this is the actual utility of this input gate. Now come to the output gate. So output gate means the output gate in LSTM network determines how much of the memory cell information should be used to produce the output of the current timestamp means how much information we should keep to produce something in the current scenario. So I'm just giving you the same example. Say considering with the weather prediction task example that I have given for input gate, the output gate in the LSTM would determine how much of the information will be stored in the memory cell such as how much historical temperature data or how much historical temperature trend should be used means last 100 years of temperature we should keep or last 50 years of temperature information we should keep so it is the responsibility of the output gate to find out how much historical temperature trend we should keep in order to predict the temperature using this lstm model say whenever we are using lstm model we have to give some sequence of data of the previous year say i am using stock market prediction so stock market prediction will use some sequence of data so now to predict today's stock market value how much previous data should i collect should i collect one year of previous data two years of previous data or 100 years of previous data so it depends application wise if i am talking about weather prediction app it has to take 100 years of data for more accurate prediction. But if I'm talking about stock market, it should take last five to 10 years of the previous data. So it deals with the amount of information that how much information we should use in order to get better prediction. Whereas input get focus on what? Input get focus on what is the number of feature we should use in order to make the model to understand better. So this is the purpose of the input gate. Now come to the third part that is the forget gate. So this is a beautiful part and this is the main attraction of this LSTM model. This forget gate in LSTM network determines how much of the information from the previous memory cell should be retained or forgotten. So just like human brain, how much information to keep in the brain and how much information to be forgotten. So this thing is determined by the forget gate. So it takes the current input data and the previous hidden layer state and then it will use some kind of activation function in order to generate the gate value between 0 and 1. Means if the gate value of the forget gate is 0 means all the previous information is forgotten. Whereas if the gate value of this forget gate is 1 means all this previous information is retained. So try to understand this forget gate basically uses activation function which may be a sigmoid activation function and it will try to generate values between 0 and 1. So 0 means everything that it has acquired from the previous cell it should be forgotten means all informations are irrelevant. But if the value of this forget gate is 1, it means it will retain all the information. Similarly, I can also conclude that if by using sigmoid activation function, if the input gate generates value between 0 and 1 
for the memory cell, zero means no new information is added in the memory cell, while the value of one means all the new information is added in the memory cell. Similarly, again for the output gate, say it is again using any activation function, say sigmoid activation function, and it will try to generate a number between zero and one. So here zero means no information is used in the output, while one means all the information from the memory cell is used for output. So these are the basic interpretation of this three gate. So if you want to compare between LSTM and RNN, you can say that number of gate differs in the memory cell of this two network and also since LSTM has three different gates inside a single memory and this three gate can control the information retention, the amount of information and the number of features. So therefore LSTM is more useful than RNN. So this is the basic difference between LSTM and RNN. But see whenever i am discussing this lstm and rnn model we have understood up to this so if i am talking about rnn model so the rnn model will have a feedback loop in the hidden layer then we have input node and output node and it will use a sequence of hidden layer in order to process sequence of data so here we have only two gets input and output Whereas whenever I'm talking about LSTM, each and every memory cell is very much complex because it will use three gates, input gate, output gate, and forget gate. But here the biggest question is, which one is better, RNN or LSTM? So now if we see the architecture of LSTM, we find that due to the use of three gates, inside a particular memory it works better but technically speaking works better means what what is the problem in rnn we have to find out actually the problem in rnn is problem of vanishing gradient or exploding gradient problem so now we will discuss the basic problem of rnn and these problems are known as vanishing gradient problem or exploding gradient problem now please pay attention what is this problems are all about now whenever i have started this class i have discussed that pack propagation is the mechanism which is used in the training activity of the neural network any neural network can use this back propagation mechanism the ultimate aim is to minimize the loss function and this back propagation is estimated with respect to the model parameter, means weight bias and everything. So it is understood that back propagation is used by RNN and back propagation is used by LSTM. But during back propagation, means whenever we are sending our data from input through hidden layer to output layer, and whenever we are propagating it back to the input layer, through hidden layer, then there will be some problem. So what is the problem? See, whenever I am talking about back propagation, what should be the main understanding? Suppose you are using a deep learning model. Deep learning model means you have many layers during the training activity. Say this is the input layer and deep learning model means I am using so many hidden layers and we have some output layer. So these are the many layers we have in between. So now during training, the gradient becomes extremely large. Now try to understand whenever we are back propagating means whatever error it is generating, I am just back propagating this error. So while propagating back this error, see at some point of time, if the gradient value say it becomes very very large so what will happen if the gradient value become very large so value of this gradient for the consecutive layer will also increase and if abruptly the value of the gradient will increase it will affect the network convergence now what was the convergence i have stated that for a particular neural network 
we are back propagating. Why we are back propagating? Because we want to reduce errors. And how many times we have to back propagate? Until and unless our output converges. Output convergence means whatever value I am getting in the first iteration, the same value I am getting in the second iteration, third iteration. It means the value is now converged. So here my point is if we are back propagating, back propagation means we are calculating gradient. If at some point of time, if we have sudden increase in gradient, so what will happen? The convergence activity of the network will be hindered. Means this network will not converge and we will find some other problem in the network. So as a result, the prediction of the network will be hampered. So this is known as exploding gradient. So why we are concerned about this problem because gradient is a mathematical term that basically represents the rate of change of loss function. So this is the most important term. So this rate of change of loss function is known as gradient and it is evaluated with respect to network parameter. So during this back propagation, we can say that it's a process of updating the parameter based on the gradient. So this gradient may decrease or may increase. So abrupt increase in gradient while back propagation is exploding gradient problem. And we will find this problem in RNN. So whenever we are using RNN while back propagating, some value of the gradient in some layers may increase abruptly, but it will never happen in LSTM. And what is vanishing gradient? So by the name, you can understand similarly while back propagating, sometimes what will happen, the value of the gradient will start decreasing. And when we are propagating from output layer to input layer, the gradient value become so less, the information will not be reached to the input layer. So it will be vanished in between somewhere. So the value of the gradient will be lost. As a result, no information will be propagated from output to input layer. So as a result, the network fails in prediction. So this is known as vanishing gradient. So vanishing gradient and exploding gradient, all the problems may appear in RNN, but they never appear in LSTM. So this is the first technical difference between RNN and LSTM. And one more important thing you have to realize that both the network are designed for preserving sequence of data. So this RNN has very less amount of retention capability in compared to LSTM means LSTM can preserve more sequence of data than RNN. So this is the main two technical differences between LSTM and RNN. So that's all for today.